Now we are going to develop the concept of systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure and the factors affecting them very briefly, right? Detail will be discussed in the lecture related with the blood pressure. First of all, what is systolic blood pressure? The left ventricle is contracting, you know, here in this diagram I have shown the systolic event, left ventricle is contracting. Here I am showing the left ventricle is relaxing. So this diagram is systolic event and this diagram is diastolic event. During left ventricular systole, of course, mitral valve is closed and aortic valve is open and blood is rapidly ejecting into aorta. So naturally volume and pressure in aorta is increased and when during the systole, when blood is entering from ventricle to the aorta and volume and pressures in the aorta are increased, as aorta is elastic artery, it will stretch out. When it will stretch out, it will accommodate the volume, but there will be definite there will be increased in the pressure within the aorta and this increase in pressure will be transmitted to, to the major arteries as well and that the maximum pressure which will be uh, uh, which will be present in the aorta and major branches that is called systolic pressure suppose normally systolic pressure is 120 millimeter of mercury 120 millimeter of mercury again what is the systolic blood pressure Systolic blood pressure is the blood pressure present in the major, uh, in the aorta and major arteries like brachial arteries, right? During the systole of the left ventricle, the left ventricle is ejecting the full stroke volume into aorta, creating increased volume in the aorta and increased pressure in the aorta and this pressure waves will move forward and produce the systolic blood pressure, right? Now, this is systolic blood pressure. Systolic blood pressure depends on how many factors. Systolic blood pressure depends number one on stroke volume. Systolic blood pressure. It depends on stroke volume. What I mean by stroke volume? If left ventricle eject, first of all what is stroke volume? Stroke volume is amount of the blood ejected by the left ventricle in one systole to aorta, right? For example, if left ventricle contract and during its one systole it throws 70 ml blood into aorta, we will say the stroke volume is 70 ml. Now it's very easy to understand that if stroke volume is large, it means larger blood is pumped from the left ventricle into aorta, so naturally systolic blood pressure will go up. And if stroke volume is less, if it is not ejecting much blood and very less stroke volume is ejected naturally pressure during the systole will be low. So we can say that systolic blood pressure is directly proportional to the stroke volume or another way to say is that systolic blood pressure is directly proportional to the cardiac output. Cardiac output is stroke volume multiplied with heart rate. Again let me repeat it. What is systolic blood pressure. Systolic blood pressure is the maximum pressure in the major arterial system during the systole which is produced by the ventricular systole by introducing the stroke volume into arterial system. Is that right? Now when stroke volume increases of course then systolic blood pressure will go up. If stroke volume decreases systolic blood pressure will be going down. This is one factor. Second factor which affects the systolic blood pressure is the compliance. Compliance of arterial tree. Compliance of arterial tree. What is compliance? Compliance means stretchability or distensibility of vascular channels. Is that right? Now, normally arteries are far less compliant as compared to the veins, but still arterial tree shows some degree of compliance and aorta shows some degree little compliance that when uh, during systole extra blood come here right it stretches out if it cannot stretch out pressure in aorta will be very high is that right so more the if aorta in younger people aorta is more compliant it is more elastic it is more distensible it is more stretchable. Due to that reason, in younger people, when stroke volume comes into aorta and it stretches, right, 
stretches more so it accommodate more volume with little pressure change so systolic blood pressure is less but as your age increases right and your vascular arterial tree becomes stiff it become hardened right it reduces its stretchability and distensibility so in senior citizens or in old persons when arteries become stiffened right the stroke volume will come can aorta stretch out answer is no if aorta cannot stretch out then the stroke volume will produce very high systolic blood pressure so we can say as aorta become less compliant with the age then systolic blood pressure will be more is that right as aorta become less compliant with the age then systolic blood pressure will be more right so what they were uh, if you increase the stroke volume if you increase the stroke volume systolic blood pressure will be up or if you decrease the compliance systolic blood pressure will be up now let's talk about diastolic blood pressure let's talk about diastolic blood pressure as i previously told you that this diagram is representing the diastole during diastole what really happens that left ventricle is relaxing right mitral valve is opening and left ventricle is in filling phase and aortic valve has closed so there is no more ejection of blood from the left ventricle to aorta during diastole is that right now what really happens in aorta what really happens in aorta and major arteries is that during systole whatever blood was present over here during diastole no blood is coming to major arteries but due to elastic recoil the stretched out vessel recoils back when this recoils back it keep maintains the pressure on the volume of blood which is present in the aorta so that there should be pressure maintained to some extent so that blood is still pushed through arterioles forward is that right now so what is the pressure in the major vessels during the diastole the pressure does not depend mainly on stroke volume now during the diastole the pressure depends how much blood volume is trapped into major vessels it this depends on that arterioles are constricted or dilated for example if i dilate these arterioles if i give arteriolo dilators arterioles dilate during diastole no blood will be coming here but due to arteriolo dilatation what whatever blood is present in major arterial tree through dilated arterioles it will rapidly rush right towards the capillaries and blood volume during the diastole in the major arterial tree will be very less so pressure will drop so it means whenever you produce arterial dilatation blood can rapidly run off from major arterial tree through the arterioles to distal part of systemic circulation because is left blood volume left in major arteries so pressure drop too much so we say there is less diastolic pressure but if i give you arteriolo constrictor and all these arterioles become constricted then during the diastole blood cannot rapidly move forward blood is trapped into major artery arteries and when blood is trapped in major arteries then even in diastole when no blood is coming from the ventricle but because where due to arterial constriction blood is uh, very little blood is moving forward from the major arteries to distal part of systemic circulation so what happens larger amount of volume is trapped into major arteries and if larger amount of the volume is trapped into major arteries what will be the result there will be higher pressure so it means that diastolic blood pressure depends on amount of blood present in major arteries during the diastole and how much blood will be present during the diastole here it depends on there is what is total peripheral resistance this is offering total peripheral resistance total peripheral resistance mainly depends on what arteriolar diameter right if there is more total peripheral resistance if arterioles are constricted and there is more resistance to the blood flow from the major arteries through the 
arterioles to distal part of the systemic circulation, then more volume is trapped here and more pressures are there. Diastolic blood pressure goes up. But if there is less total peripheral resistance, it means arterioles are dilated, then more blood will move forward from the major arteries and pressure will drop here. Right? So it means the most important, single most important factor which determines the uh, diastolic blood pressure is total peripheral resistance. If total peripheral resistance is more, more blood is trapped here and diastolic blood pressure goes up. If total peripheral resistance is low, more blood moves out of arterial tree and diastolic blood pressure is less. The other factors which affect the diastolic blood pressure are compliance, compliance of the arterial tree. Again, I told you that if vessels are, if arteries are not very stiff, then during systole they stretch out and during diastole they recoil. Is that right? Advantage is that if, if arterial tree is in young people, arterial tree is more compliant. Due to that reason, during systole it stretches out and systolic pressure is not too much. And during diastole it recoils back and diastolic drop is, drop is not too much. But in old age, when your vessels become, arterial tree become less compliant, then what really happens in old age? What really happens in old age is that when systole is there, this cannot stretch out, right? It cannot accommodate. So it is stiffened arterial tree and it does not stretch out. So pressure becomes very high in the arterial tree with the, after the stroke volume and in elderly people, uh, systolic blood pressure really goes up, right? And in elderly people, because during the diastole, stiff vessel cannot really coil, uh, recoil back, right? And it means they cannot even maintain the diastolic pressure well. But still in elderly patient, diastolic pressure even may go up. But main reason is arteriolo, arteriolar and right thickening, right? And that arteriolar thickening may increase total peripheral resistance. So what we can say that if vessels become less compliant, if arterial tree become less compliant, then systolic pressure will go up. But if it become less compliant, right, diastolic blood pressure will go down. So these are the major factors. But if you really cannot remember all of them, you remember simple thing. You know, compliance of arterial system does not change rapidly. It's over the decades. What really changes is, the, the parameters which really changes, uh, changes is cardiac output and stroke volume and total peripheral resistance. So you have to remember, systolic blood pressure mainly depends on stroke volume and cardiac output and diastolic blood pressure mainly depends on, depends on total peripheral resistance.